It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Italy is gearing up for an election on March 4th. Most observers predict that it will end in a hung parliament. Luigi Di Maio of the Five Star Movement is leading in the polls at the moment as far as a single party is concerned. But the right-wing parties have formed a coalition led by former Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi, which includes his own party, Forza Italia. Former Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi is banned from running for the presidency because of his tax fraud convictions, but he continues to play a major public role in Italian politics. About 30 to 40 percent of the public is still undecided, which means that final results of this election is very much undecided. To discuss all of this with me, I'm joined by Rafael Laudani. He is professor of history of political thought at the University of Bologna, Italy, and director of the Academy of Global Humanities and Critical Theory. I thank you so much for joining us, Rafael. Thank you. So, Rafael, let's start with who are the leading contenders and how are they doing in the polls and what possible scenarios are there in terms of who might win? Okay, so the first things to know is that the Italian system uh, has always had several parties participating in the election. And this will be the case also in this, uh, in this election. So, actually, we have... The, the new electoral system helps favorize the formation of coalition of, of different parties. So we have a rightist coalition made up of Forza Italia, Silvio Berlusconi party, uh, the North League, so the, the, the political party that is in some ways supportive of... Uh, uh, it, this is the one who is more... Uh, xenophobia against migrations, immigrants, uh, and against also the European Union. And then you have Fratelli d'Italia, that is the post-fascist party. Okay, so that's the first coalition. Then on the other hand, then you have another coalition uh, led by the Democratic Party of former Prime Minister uh, Renzi uh, with uh, other three very small other parties. The most famous one is the one led by Emma Bonino, former uh, European commissioner. Uh, then at the left of uh, uh, the Democratic Party coalition, we have uh, another uh, coalition that it's made up of those people that left the Democratic Party in polemic with Renzi uh, uh, and uh, the so-called uh, Sinistra Italiana, Italian left. So they created a new group that it's called Liberi Uguali, Free and Equal. At the, and then there is another coalition which is called Potere al Popolo, which is some way at the left of Liberi Uguali with some other small groups. Then there is an, another poll, which is the third poll and probably the one who is going to have the majority of votes at the election, which is the Five Star Movement. So actually they are not a coalition, they are a single movement, and it's the, the movement that is now led by Luigi Di Maio, but uh, founded and some way identified with the... Uh, actor Beppe Grillo. Uh, so the scenario is still uncertain. By uh, it seems at the it seems at the moment that uh, the Five Star could be at the end of the election the the first political party. Actually, this was the case also in the last uh, elections, national elections, but with a percentage that will not give them the opportunity to govern the country alone. So they will be, if they want to govern, if we want to be at the government and they have the majority in parliament, then they have to create, uh, have find, find an agreement with other parties, okay? And we don't really know if they are willing to do that or not. In okay. the past, 
they didn't want to do that. Uh, so then the most probable scenario is a, a situation of instability without a, a, a solid majority in parliament with the consequences of stimulating the creation of, a, of an alliance between the right coalition and the center-left coalition, so between Berlusconi and Renzi, to make it clear, uh, uh, in, the, in a way which is some way closer to the model of the great coalition in Germany. Rafael, what's of course surprising to all of us, if you're an outsider looking into Italy, is that Berlusconi has somehow managed to make a comeback. Um, he recently made a statement this week that if his party is elected, it will deport 600,000 migrants. Um, is the public opinion in Italy so anti-refugee and xenophobic that such popular statements can actually uh, make Forza Italia stronger? Okay, so one thing we have to uh, keep in mind when we think about Italy, uh, politics in Italy, is that actually, in, at least in the last 50, 60, maybe even 70 years, okay, the majority of the people have always been moderate, moving from the center to the right, okay? Even when we had center leftist government, then the, this was uh, the consequences of division among the rightist party, okay? So at any time, especially from the Berlusconi age, the, cent the, the rightist coalition uh, went to the election uh, united, they won the election. OK, so actually that we didn't have really structural changes to this situation. Some way we could think that actually we could have a rightist coalition of the government governing Italy with the majority, but without Berlusconi. OK, but when Berlusconi was really in trouble, uh, the center leftist government didn't really push the situation to put in definitely out of the political scenario. So in a situation of weakness, of structural weakness as uncertainty, he, he has found again a way to play a key role in the election. This is especially because the rightist coalition could not win the election without Forza Italia, so without Berlusconi. This has given him a role. And the same was true also for Renzi, okay? Uh, I mean, without the indirect support in the parliament of Forza Italia, Renzi would not be able to be prime minister, okay? So there is some kind of ties linking the two coalitions for several years in Italy. So the, this probable scenario of a great coalition, actually, it's not real new or something that would would surprise us. Right. Um, here's to demonstrate Berlusconi's comeback. He's actually speaking on behalf of the party in what appears to be a campaign ad. Let's have a look. I am here to remind you that voting is very easy. You have to make a cross on the symbol of Forza Italia, naturally, only on the symbol. In this way, you will have voted for our candidates, and there will not be any possibility of a dispute over your vote. Remember then, make a cross on the symbol of Forza Italia and naturally get all of those who you know to make the cross as well. I suppose the question here is how did Silvio Berlusconi rehabilitate himself from his image of a, as a corrupt authoritarian populist politician carried by his money and his ownership of the media and so forth, and now present himself as an elder, responsible statesperson, asking people to come out and uh, indicate their popular will by, by voting. So in this case, I think that part of the responsibility is also of the Five Star Movement, and in general, of populist critique of the political class in Italy 
So the fact that little by little it emerged as common sense, the fact that all politicians are the same, they are all corrupt. In this sense, there's no real difference, significant difference between Berlusconi and, and, and other politicians. So then this means that if they are all corrupted, then we can, we can get also Berlusconi. Okay? And this is part of the cultural hegemony that populist politics has gained in Italy. And that now it is it, that now he is identified with the uh, political slogans of the Five Star Movement. But let me go back for a moment to your previous questions on the fact if these anti-refugees, anti-migrants uh, mentality is now dominant in Italy. Yes, it is. Unfortunately, and here again, this depends, of course, on the on rightist politics and rightist politicians, but most of all of the politics of the center leftist gover government of the last of the last few years, that being very reluctant to assume uh, a politics of openness towards refugees and migrants has some way contributing in affirming the idea that actually migrants and refugees are the problem. So in the last analysis, when you have to choose between a left party that is acting, presumed to be left, but it's acting as, the, as a rightist party, and then you have a, a real rightist party. So if you have to choose between uh, a fake right and the original right, then at some point you decide to go directly for the right. So now this is the situation. We have two, two rightist parties, actually. In the, their politics is the same towards refugees and migrants. There are no significant differences. And if now the spread common opinion is that refugees and migrants are the problem, then I prefer a rightist government because they will go directly against the problem. Right. And uh, very much like what is happening here with the Trump administration. Now, let's look at the left. Um, who is the candidates uh, on the left? Uh, and how unified is the left going to be in this coming election? Okay. Oh, very complicated question. Because in principle, we have a, a big center-left, a coalition led by the Democratic Party that pretends to be on the left side of the parliament, but then he is acting and acted in the last few years as a, a neoliberal uh, political party, has any other rightist party in Europe. So actually, formally, it is a leftist party, but in my opinion, there's no longer anything that could be identified as leftists in their parties, okay, and in their policies. So then, actually, I would not consider them as part of the left, okay? So, and the same is true also for the five stars, okay? Well, uh, in principle, part of their programs and strategies goes on the left, and part of their base of militants has a past in militancy in the left. But actually, if we look concretely to their uh, political program, then in terms of economics, in terms of politics towards refugees, migrants towards uh, Europe, they have the same politics. They, they propose the same uh, solutions of the, the rightist parties, okay? And actually, they are one of the main vectors for the uh, affirmation of, of, of the rising xenophobia that it's now one of the main issues in Italy today. So in this case, too, I don't consider them as leftists. So what remains? It remains two small parties, Liberi Uguali, that it's supposed to stay, Paul says that it could be between 4%, 7% in the best case, okay? So actually, we, that it's not in the conditions of being really an issue, okay? 
Then we have another leftist party, which is Potere, Potere al Popolo, uh, which we don't know. I mean, they are doing well during the electoral campaign, so maybe there is a chance they will uh, uh, have the 4% in order to have representative in parliament, but that's not for sure at all. And Potere al Popolo and Liberi Uguali are not united at all. So actually they have two different strategies. And then we we have three more leftist parties, very, very small. They will not really get much votes, but they go independently alone. So actually, in terms of elections and uh, uh, institutional politics, one of the main issue is the fact that leftist parties are small, they are marginal and they are divided. But for me, the most important problem and difficult from a leftist perspective is the very weak situation of social movements we have today in Italy. Okay, so we, especially because in the last few years, uh, the five star movement was able to some way uh, concentrate and channelize protest. Okay, in a populist way, we didn't have in Italy uh, uh, movements like Indignados in Spain or Syriza in Greece, even if we had very complicated social and economic situation. So that at the moment, social movements are politically ineffective. And that's the main problem we are uh, facing in Italy today from a leftist perspective. All right, Rafael, lastly, uh, give us a sense of what the conflict between Berlusconi and M Matteo Salvini is. Well, it's a, it's a conflict of leadership, okay? So actually, the real competition, uh, uh, the real electoral competition, if my scenario is possible, so the fact that at the end of the election we will have a great coalition, uh, depends on uh, who's going to get more votes. So if the rightist coalition will be able to create a majority, then the, the, the issue will be who's, who will who receive more votes between the North League and uh, Forza Italia, because this will express the prime minister. Okay, So Salvini is pretending to achieve the leading role that Berlusconi has played so far in the rightist coalition, okay? And Berlusconi, of course, wants to be still the leaders, even if it's not able to be the prime minister, because he will choose, he will decide the prime minister if Forza Italia is the first political party among the rightist one. On the contrary, if the, red, the rightist coalition is not able to get a majority on their own, and so th they are forced to create a coalition with the Democratic Party, in this case, Salvini will be out of the government, out of the majority. Okay? So then Salvini and Berlusconi need to go together to the election, but actually they are in competition. All right, Rafael, it looks like it's going to be an interesting election on March 4th. Um, I hope to have you back to discuss it at that time. I thank you so much for joining us again. Good pleasure. Thank you for calling me. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.